Welcome to Simply Science from Nature Education. I'm Adam Weiss and I'm here at Harvard Medical School in Boston with Dr. Margaret Livingstone, who looks at how people see and looks at how artists actually understand how people see sometimes as well as you guys do, right? We're going to talk about the Mona Lisa as an example of how artists can do experiments with how we see. Absolutely. So the Mona Lisa is a very famous painting, very popular painting. And the art historians tell us that it's popular because her smile is ambiguous, so you can't tell if she's happy or sad. But if you look at the Mona Lisa, and I want you to try looking between her eyes and her mouth. So first, look at her eyes, but think about what her mouth looks like. Now, it, it's kind of hard to know where your eyes are going, but try to look at her eyes and think about how much she's smiling. So I'm staring her right in the eyes at the moment and yes. trying to think about her mouth. And then look directly at her mouth. And That's then, a big difference. Yeah, and now look at her eyes again. Go back and forth and see if her expression changes. It looks like she's smiling when I look at her eyes, and she's just sitting there when I look at her mouth. So now, that's not your imagination. That's not like what the art historians say. That has something to do with the way you see, not the way you think. So that's my eyes and my brain doing that to me, not my imagination. It's your eyes. Really? Yeah. Because your vision, because of the way your retina is organized, is much higher acuity in your center of gaze. So if you look at that central dot, all of the letters in that image are equally readable. So you can see that there's a dramatic fall off in acuity away from your center of gaze. Yeah, and if I look at one of the big letters, I can't see the small ones at all. And so that's why you move your eyes when you read. Hmm. Because the letters are tiny in a book and you can only see them with your center of gaze. So that doesn't mean your peripheral vision is bad, it just means your peripheral vision is designed to see bigger, blurrier things, and your central vision is for looking at tiny, detailed things. But this difference in acuity with eccentricity is probably why the Mona Lisa's expression changes as you look at it. Because if you filter the Mona Lisa in such a way that you can see what she would look like if you saw the whole thing with your peripheral vision compared to what she would look like if you saw the whole thing with your central vision, which of course you can't do. You can see that her expression's quite different. So here we've got on the left the, the overall blurred version that you would yes. get if you were just using the side of your eye, side of your, your vision. Your peripheral vision, yeah. And the other side is the, the sharpened just details part. Yep, exactly. And she's definitely smiling in one and not in the other. Yeah. So that's amazing. So as you move your eyes around, her expression changes because you go from your peripheral vision to your central vision with different parts of the image. And so, that gives a dynamic quality to a static image, which before the days of video was a very special thing to be able to do. So da Vinci was a neurobiologist? I don't know if Leonardo actually understood this phenomenon because he wrote about a lot of the techniques he used. He was actually a scientist. He wrote about a lot of techniques about shading and how your two eyes work and things like that, but he never wrote about this particular phenomenon. And we know that he liked this painting because he worked on it for years and then he carried it around with him for a long time and he gave it to the King of France. So he may have experienced the same thing and maybe he didn't understand exactly what was going on but with our computer technology and the understanding of the brain that we have these days, we can figure out what maybe he didn't know, but he certainly used very well. Yes, it's the understanding of the eye, not the brain. This, this, this happens very early in your visual system, this difference between central and peripheral vision. It happens in the retina. Wow, so this is how we see demonstrated by da Vinci. Great, thank you very much. You're welcome.